Hey guys, since the rework, Rayner has had a lot of controversy over where people think he is and where he should be. What I mean by that is a lot of Assassin players in the competitive scene feel like he just does no damage now and he shouldn't be drafted. Yet he's still seen some success in the competitive scene in a couple different ways. Uh, he's won a few games in Masters Clash on maps like Dragonshire and Battlefield of Eternity. He's won some games on Garden of Terror, um, and he has seen some play. So I want to talk about the playstyle that I think he currently fits and what I expect to most likely get buffed um, that could be a little weak right now. So as we go through his build, um, I want to reiterate the build that I recommended. Exterminator, um, Fight or Flight, Fuel the Rush, Give Me More, Rallying Cry, and then whatever you want at 20 and whatever you want at 10. Um, that makes you very, very hard to kill. You have a lot of sustain and you have a lot of armor. The downside is that you're going to be doing the least amount of damage than almost any other build. And since Raynor's auto tech damage got nerfed and you're not taking any DPS talents, you're going to be doing about 15% less damage than the average Raynor did before the rework which is pretty bad. Um, so I recommend that in utility areas, and it is also the highest win rate. Exterminator has 50% win rate against Ace Null with 42 and Veteran Marksman at 43. And when you start getting down into the later talents that keep this build online, you'll have Feel the Rush, which has a, a good 2.5% higher than Unstable. And you'll also have like Rallying Cry, which is 11% higher than something like Bounty Hunter at level 16 or Paint Them Red, even just a few percent over Paint Them Red. And so this build is pretty straightforward. It keeps you alive. But I've talked to a couple auto attackers and they basically say, well, it still feels bad that even if you could stay alive forever, doing no damage just doesn't feel good. Which is where there's been a lot of debate about the Q build. The Q build is basically this. You take Ace in the Hole at level 1, which increases your Q damage by 25%. Then doesn't really matter at level four. Level uh, seven, you're going to not take heavy slugs, even though you'd think that would be a Q talent. Um, you're going to instead be taking unstable compound to lower the cooldown of your Q. You're going to take line them up to lower the cooldown of your Q, and you're going to bump up the damage of your Q and increase the amount of healing you get from it. We've had a variation of Q build before, and it was the meta build. And now that the Q hasn't been nerfed, but we got a talent that increases the damage of Q, Q build today is actually better than Q build before the rework outside of the fact that you do less auto attack damage. So if they bring his damage back up to where it was, they remove that 9% nerf, then this Q build will probably be the meta in most situations. But in his current state where Raynor currently is, um, I think his only use is this unkillable uh, macro machine hero. So uh, I've got a replay. It's, it's a bit of a stomp, so keep it, um, I would say, uh, take it with a grain of salt. But this replay shows a little bit about kind of how this, this uh, play style works and, and everything. So let's, uh, let's fast forward a little bit and let's get rolling with this. So this game is in Masters. Uh, you may recognize Luna, a uh, competitive player on one of the um, academy teams for CCL, Gojira. He's been a competitive player, um, like 60% uh, Chen win rate in Master Grandmaster ranks. Um, and so this is on my Smurf, but my Smurf's in Masters. So again, take this game still with a grain of salt. So early game, I'm just trying to deal damage to threaten the ETC so he can't just walk around for free. Um, but you can see I'm hitting ETC quite a bit and he's not really taking any damage. <laughs> and and so you can feel the nerf right away. You can feel that it's a pretty significant reduction in damage. <clears throat> you can see that the, um, the, I mean, even when I get the crits on him, I'm just not doing a lot. This was uh, throwing my W on there and throwing all of my attacks at him. And I've gotten him that entire fight. Old Rainer probably would have gotten him to like 30 to 40% health. And he was sitting at, I mean, a pretty healthy 70% when he walked away. Now, right here, what I should have done as we were approaching one minute, when I realized we couldn't lead to any kills, especially since the enemy ETC did take some armor against me, I should have gone up here and snuck up this direction and taken the siege camp. 
With Exterminator, you can take Siege Camps alone on most maps. Um, and you could even solo a lot of Bruiser Camps, depending on if you, need, if you get like a fountain or something ahead of time. Um, my other option would be go down here, but you can see the enemy ETC is checking this pretty often. So it would have been best for me to go up here where Butcher most likely wouldn't be checking this. I could then take this and then we would have an extra camp on the way. And the cool part about this extra camp is Butcher has a hard time clearing camps. And I could use Exterminator, the new passive of Exterminator, where I could inspire the siege camp and now they will have the attack speed bonus and it no longer expires. So I could inspire and give the, the three siege camp uh, minions here, I could give them 30% more attack speed and 10% more movement speed, which would not only make it to where we guarantee win this matchup, but because it's hard for Stitches, or not Stitches, for Butcher to clear out that camp, um, if Gojira even bullies him at all, or if the um, if, if like he wants to roam, then what happens is it, it's going to push and i mean if butcher dies we basically take front walls with that extra 30 percent attack speed so overall i should have done that but i didn't do that i was also a little rusty i think this is my first or second um storm league game since the season reset and since the reworks so i was pretty rusty i took a bit of a break of the game of of playing i, I still coach like five teams still watch all of hec still do analysis for some teams but, uh, but yeah, so early game, pretty boring. And that's why I should have, uh, I should have played up the fact that I had exterminator. And I think that their Orphea actually does go up there and takes that camp. I end up going here first. Um, my reasoning for going for this camp, because I was already too late to go top and get that camp. So I figured if I could get this camp early, then what would happen is we could potentially threaten on the bottom camp when it was time to actually go for that. So I wanted to grab this camp and not actually cap it yet. My goal was to grab this camp and just let it sit. Then I was gonna go down here and grab this camp and my team could grab this camp um, at like 245, this camp at three, and then we go to race and we'll have two camps pushing that I've given 30% attack speed to both. So that was my plan. Um, unfortunately, ETC showed up. Now, fortunately, his team didn't realize what he was doing. So I sit on the point and and knock him off of the point so that I can grab it. And then we just kill this, uh, this Orphea really quick. And there we go. And so that was a mistake on their part, but it, I had a plan either way. And it seems to have turned out pretty well. So with two people dead, instead of backing or grabbing a fountain, I figured I would just race immediately because I probably wouldn't have any any contest on if I start racing. Um, but I realize I have an extra 15 seconds, so I might as well tap. Again, a little rusty. I make mistakes, like everyone else. Um, Arguably, I'm probably not the best mechanical player anyways. I'm usually better at just watching what, what's going on. Race is still the same. Uh, Exterminator, Rainer, Race is, I would say, in the top four of heroes. Um, competing against things like Q-Build Vala, competing against Greymane, I think he's definitely in the top four. So, grabbing Exterminator is still a solid option. Right here, it's really risky um, to, try to, to try to race. And so, I decide, well, if I'm not going to be able to race, I could go to top camp. But then I was like, no, if they're going to race, I'm going to come back down and, and try to race. So I get here. I try to knock back the ETC. I'm just a little slow on that. Um, I don't want to get stunned, like double stunned or anything. So I start trying to pressure him again. But you can see I'm doing about 10% of his health per second. And it's just not quite enough to actually scare him off. I use my E to basically make sure that I don't die to, to Butcher. And I just kind of keep poking at it. I just go straight to the Immortal, trying to get some damage off on it, and we end up taking the first Immortal. If I hadn't have raced as early as I did and had Exterminator as early as I did, um, or, or taken Exterminator anyways, I don't think we would have won that objective. But then again, if I was playing something that did more damage, I think we probably could have threatened that ETC and kind of pushed them away. Uh, so there's definitely pros and cons. Level 7 is when I get the talent that reduces the cooldown of my E. And this is when I can kind of take some hits from Orphea and not really care. 
Do you see I'm buffing the attack speed of all of these minions as well? So our siege damage is much higher now than it would be uh, if I was playing someone else. We're able to take out a target really quick. And again, I did the same combo I've, I've showed to people a million times. You get them down to about 70-60% health, and then you do an auto attack, W to reset the auto attack, Q to slow them and get like 3 or 4 auto attacks off. And you can usually finish off like a pretty low health assassin um, in a very short period of time. Even in this build, it still works, it's just it's less burst. So, it's just less damage. It's still the same like burst window, it's just less damage. We rip through a camp very quickly. ETC tries to contest it, but again, we had already killed the Orphea. He gets hooked away. Um, so what I want to do here is I want to keep these alive, and I want to buff them. Give them some attack speed. So I'm waiting, and now I'm surrounded by them. Now they have that 30% increase attack speed, but I mean they'll get free cleared here just because we're not really pushing with them, and they use Dragon Form. But you can see, I do try to utilize that exterminator to buff the minions, and it does get relevant throughout the game. I think that buffing that those five ranged minions while we were sieging uh, really sped up our siege. Now right here, I can walk away from most things because I have that extra healing and I've got a pretty low cooldown. So that's the great part about this build. This build, I start really limit testing near the later portions of the game, and I'm really hard to kill. Right here, I, I could 1v1 Butcher, but I would just be healing him while I have this cross on me. So I figured I would just knock him back, walk away, and then I could fight him again if I wanted to. But I'd rather not. Like, it's just not necessary. So again, most of this game has been utility. I haven't done a lot of damage. I've gone from camp to racing the objective to holding top to camp top to camp uh, mid. and And then once again... Watch, I'm, I'm trying to kill this, and watch, I grab this, and I can buff its attack speed if I want to. Um, it's not really relevant, but those dogs do a lot of damage. But I save my W just for race. I grab Hyperion. I think Rainer's Raider is kind of necessary if you want the same single target damage as you had in the past. But Hyperion's really good if you are just sieging a lot, which we are. So again, we're ripping through this, and this is going to be a healthy Immortal. We'll have Hyperion. Um, the enemies are actually on that camp, but we can't really... Oh, they, they hopped off the camp. Now our team can engage if we want to, but I think we could just honestly push with the objective. We have an interrupt for Mosh. We just need to make sure that we save our Q. And the cool part about this build is I don't need to use my Q. Um, it's not a Q build. I don't. I'm like my damage is not tied to my Q. My whole build, anyways, is not tied to my Q. Right here, I I actually do this a lot. This game, I will fire Hyperion. I will tank the structure, and instead of immediately backing out, I stay and I tank the structure for a while, and I use my adrenaline rush to keep my to keep me up. And watch the cooldown of this adrenaline rush. So I just shaved it down from a 45 second cooldown down to about a seven second cooldown and I immediately popped it again and I just ran it down. I'm at full health and look at my adrenaline rush cooldown again. Again, another five second cooldown. So for the first objective of the game, actually this second objective, for the second objective of the game, we have now just basically tanked for our team and killed three members and they could not threaten me at all. And because our other DPS, we basically have a tank another tank and our, our dps is way too mobile so the only person that they could potentially kill is me and i'm unkillable right now so i end up hitting him so that i can tank the turret and i use my e and i i start lowering it and then i get a little overconfident and i actually end up dying here and i guess i don't die here i thought i died here but um but yeah like that's do I go back in? I know I was limit testing this game, but I tanked. So it's almost like having a Sylvanas, right? Where, and this is such a bad example, but it's almost like having a Sylvanas where she would turn off the keep. I just tanked the keep and I just healed through all of it. And to have that on a range DPS instead of having your tank have lower armor and be squishier is huge because that means that your tank can walk at them. They have to throw all their damage on the tank. 
and he has full armor. He's got everything that he needs, and and I get to basically just tank it as a ranged DPS with no care in the world. And so that's what's really fun about this build. But again, like I said before, it's a lot less damage than it used to do, and I wouldn't take it to a map that you couldn't abuse Exterminator. Now at level 13, give me more, heals me more. Um, your E normally heals you 25% of your health. Now it's going to heal for 37.5. And it's also going to give me that extra range when I'm using my W. You see this increased range indicator, and then it disappears when my W ends. I have the increased attack speed on these. So if a fight does break out, um, we've got a lot of extra damage. So I just follow up. Mosh goes out. I'm still getting healed over on my E. We just kill that target. And we just push. Like, we, we just have no care in the world because they can't threaten me, right? But, again, take it with a grain of salt. The Storm League match, and it's, it's not a major competitive match. It's on a map that this is probably his best map for in this build. Um, and the enemies are not coordinated. But you can see how powerful this is, right? You see these two siege minions just firing 30% faster. And it's so easy to siege. So this entire game has been macro focused. These team fights are okay, but we've only had like three real team fights. So while the team fights are okay, they're not really... They're not like major, right? Where we've gotten our values in between team fights we've had some crazy value and that's what this build's all about so hopefully this explains how this build works and what you should do about this build if you want to play this version of uh rainer it is a macro heavy rainer that your goal is to get a bunch of camps buff the camps with exterminator and then work on objectives and you just want to be a target that looks good to attack for the enemy but not too good to attack because you'll still die to like, you'll, you'll still get hit by whatever and just die uh, if you get like fully chain CC. Like you can't 1v5, but you can't be focused. Um, like you can't be killed by a single diver. So like even right here, I see that uh, the Stukov gets chained, but I, I can use my E. So I went from 60% health and I just healed to full and I could get my cooldown of Adrenaline Rush low enough that I could probably stand in front of this Stukov and get attacked by Butcher and save Stukov. So that's what I do. I try to stand in front of him. My E's... I, I've used it two seconds ago, and it's already on a, a five-second cooldown, and now it's on a four-second, three-second. So again, about a seven-second cooldown. I get jumped on by both ETC and Orphea. Orphea is throwing her entire combo at me, and we also have Hanzo here. I have my Hyperion going out that's helped lead to some of the kills over on this side of the map, but watch what's happening here. I literally have three enemies that are all trying to kill me right now. And I pressed E, and I gained a large amount of my health back. Now, Mosh, if, if I can't keep attacking, I can't keep casting my E, so I do end up dying. But the fact is, is I, I, I force the enemies to use a lot of their abilities on just me. And I'm just a Rainer with Exterminator, right? Like, I don't do... I don't do that much damage. And, uh... And so I respawn, we go for this, and we push. And now I'm 16 where I get that Rallying Cry. So now, these Catapults have 50% increased attack speed. And that's huge for Catapults, because Catapults do a ton of damage to structures. If we were to click on this Catapult right now, it does 380 damage to structures... And with the increased attack speed, which that particular one doesn't have on it. Hold on. Wait, do none of them have it on it? No, they all have it. Not accounted for. Did attack once every other second and then with a W you should attack. I don't know. Maybe it's just not accounted for on this. But once these things start attacking, look at how fast they're shooting. Watch this. Look at this. They're firing out right now. And so then the, the catapults quickly take out this and they decide to, to switch back. Um, and I throw out my Hyperion. I run back over here and I rebuff all of this, the, the catapults. And now the catapults quickly take out this and the catapults start assisting in this. And they just fire off. And that's it. This is the build. This is how it works. It's tanky. It's 100% macro. It's 90% macro. The team fights, 
you would be better off playing Vala, Cassia. You'd be better off playing um, Hanzo, most other auto attackers in team fights. But if you're looking for a macro machine and you know the good camp timings to go for and you're willing to always improve at your macro, this is going to be a great build to move up in rank. With that being said, though, I do want to mention that there's a really good chance that he's going to see some buffs because these are really low win rates for a new newly reworked hero. So most likely, this will either see a buff or they're going to buff up his Q or or auto attack damage. And if they do that, this build's still going to be good. If they're going to nerf things, I would imagine they're going to nerf this talent right here, Fuel the Rush. It was at 200%. And now it's at 300%, and 300% just put it a little bit over the edge. Um, so they would probably end up nerfing Fuel to Rush, and and then it's debatable on what talent will end up being the, the better talent. But that's it, guys. That is New Rainer. That is the build that I talked about on his rework that I thought would be strong. It is strong. I think it's going to be best on probably three maps. I would say um, Battlefield of Eternity would it be his best map. I would say that... Um, the Garden of Terror would be his second to best map. Um, and then just think about what you could buff. Like, I think Alterac Pass would be his third. Because Alterac Pass, you could... Exterminator makes it easy to clear up the enemy objective. It has very powerful camps. So to be able to buff those camps and take those camps faster would be great. Um, and then also, if you're pushing with a bunch of minions with the objective, you could buff the attack speed of all those minions. So... I would say those three maps, this build would be amazing on those three maps. Alterac Pass, Garden of Terror, and Battlefield of Eternity. Uh, there is also one map that's not in rotation anymore that this is pretty good on, which is Volskaya. You can take the turret camps quickly, and you can buff the attack speed of the turret camps on the objective. Sure, you can do that on Hanamura as well, but the turrets are less important on Hanamura than they are on Volskaya because it's not a point control map. But keep that in mind, that is something that you can do. You can grab those turrets and buff the attack speed of them. So those three maps are solid for Exterminator Rainer um, in this particular build. Outside of that, I would recommend potentially the Q build when it gets buffed or just head over, play like some of the old meta heroes, um, that Cass Cassia or, or whatever from there. Even Sylvanas, I think with Rainer kind of falling down, I think Sylvanas will gain a lot more popularity. Uh, hopefully this video helps you guys out. I think it's kind of a fun one. Uh, it's definitely a fun build and uh, kind of go from there. Feel free to limit test with it because you are really hard to kill after level 7 and 13. 13 specifically, but 7 is a pretty good power spike. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and feel free to check out my other videos.